This week, I'm really excited to teach you guys one of my absolute favorite tricks to do with a borrowed ordinary deck of cards. I'm also gonna announce the contest winner at the end of the video, but before any of that, check out the new intro. Okay, so there it was. That is the brand new condensed intro for the channel. Let me know in the comments what you think of the new intro, but that is not the reason that we are here. The reason we're here is because you guys have been asking for more tutorials and I am ready to deliver. See, I was really struggling with how I could do tutorials for you guys because the performance aspect for me is extremely important. But today we're learning a trick that the interactive aspect isn't that strong. It's more of a performance piece and it's one of my absolute favorites. It's visually stunning, so impossible, and it feels like there's more at play than normal cards. It feels like there's gotta be a gimmick somewhere, but there isn't. So before we even learn it, here is the performance to camera for you. This trick is done with four jokers and the four aces. That is the Ace of Diamonds, the Ace of Clubs, the Ace of Hearts, and the Ace of Spades, which is the leader ace, and that's why we're gonna leave it over here. The three other aces, the order doesn't really matter, so I will just give them a mix and set them down randomly over here, which leaves us with four cards. And do you remember what these ones were? Correct, the four jokers. I'm gonna place one of the jokers over here. That leaves me with three jokers. Watch the first ace very carefully. I'm gonna place it in my left hand and place the other three jokers on top. But with just a snap, that ace at the bottom changes. And I am left with one, two, three, four jokers. That's because the first ace traveled and it's over here now. We'll do it again, watch carefully. I'll take one of the four jokers and place it over here. Watch the second ace. I place it amongst the jokers. And once again, with just a snap, that ace is completely gone because it traveled over there. Nothing extra, just four cards in my hands. Watch the last one. You'll even see it before it happens. The joker is placed with the aces. Watch the last ace. Just a snap and a mix. And I'm left with one, two, three, four jokers. And that last ace has made it over here. So there it was. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Now here's the great news. This trick is really not that difficult technically. For how much magic you get and how amazing it is and the reactions this gets, it's really not that tough. It's more about just remembering the sequence of things and what you have to do. And if you have time on your hands, which let's be honest, we all do right now, all you have to do is watch the explanation that I'm about to give you a couple of times, follow through with cards and hands, and this is really not that tough. In terms of technique, there's only one move, really, that this routine involves, and it's called the Elmsley Count. Now, a lot of you already know the Elmsley Count because it's an incredibly strong move uh, for card magic. You could do a lot with it, but for those of you who don't, I've included a separate explanation of that and I've provided a link in the description where I will show you in detail how to do an Elmsley count. Now let's talk about the trick itself. This is my version of a trick called Jazz Aces by Peter Kane, which I believe was released in the 1970s or maybe before that. It's very old, but it's really powerful. From the moment I saw it, I fell in love with it. But I changed a few things. I added a couple of really convincing moments. I simplified a few things. And one of the things I changed the most is in the original, for those of you who know it, and you could find tons of YouTube explanations for the original, there was a display that didn't make sense. If your spectator was watching carefully, there was moments, a few moments, that they would notice a discrepancy that doesn't add up. I solved that by changing something, by adding the four jokers instead of using four random cards. Now the four jokers, is something that's really easy to come by. In most cases, I found that if I borrow a deck of cards and I'm in a house that has one, they often have more than one. So I can easily find four jokers. Otherwise, you can just carry four jokers with you with your deck of cards, as I often do. That way you take them out, you can give the four jokers, give the four aces, they check them out, you take them back, there's nothing extra, and you get right into this. So without further ado, let's learn it. Once again, grab some cards 
and follow along a couple of times and let your fingers do the memorizing. It's one of my favorites. Here's the explanation. Okay, so to set this up, you're gonna need two ordinary decks. From both the decks, you're gonna take all the jokers. So two pairs of jokers. Now in some decks, both jokers look the same. They both look like this. And in some decks, the second joker looks different. It doesn't matter as long as you have two that match and another two that match. All four can match as well. So you'll never need more than two decks, but it's also perfectly fine if it's two and two like this. Besides the jokers, you're gonna need the four aces of one of those decks in this order. Ace of spades facing them, so facing away from me. Ace of hearts facing away from me. Ace of clubs facing away from me. Ace of diamonds, that's your setup. You're gonna take the jokers in alternating order. In other words, if they're not all the same, they alternate. So one like this, then the different one, then the same as the first one, then the different one again, like this. You're gonna turn those face down. Then you're gonna take your four aces and you're gonna put them on top of the jokers and that is your setup. You are ready to now do this trick anytime, anywhere. When you're ready to perform, you spread the cards like this and with your left hand, you show them the jokers. You say this is done with four jokers. And as you show them the four aces, and to the camera I'm doing this, but you know, to them I would lean it forward like this to show them. As that's happening, my left thumb pushes that top joker over, I place my pinky under it, and I pull it back like this. And so now my pinky is holding that spot under there. I place the aces on top of that joker and now I reposition to where my thumb comes back here and when I pick up what looks like the aces, I pick up at where my pinky was and I'm secretly holding a joker under those aces. Now I'm going to show them the aces one at a time as I flip them over. So my left thumb peels off the ace of diamonds and I use these other aces here to flip it over and place it down. Ace of diamonds. Ace of clubs, ace of hearts, and now I place what they think is the ace on top, but it's secretly hiding a joker under it. Of course, you don't show them that, you just set it down. That's done quickly. Ace of diamonds, ace of clubs, ace of hearts, and the ace of spades face up. Then you turn it over just to match what you did. And it's kind of silly because you're going to turn it right back up, but to me, this is a subtle convincer because you go from there to showing them that you know, you're not hiding anything. So there's the ace of spades. You place it down there. Now, follow carefully for the next three aces because you're gonna show them three aces. One, two, three. You pick these up, they think these are the aces, but they're not. That's a joker. But here's how you're gonna show these to them. You're gonna square them up in your left hand. Your right hand is gonna reach under here and pull out the bottom ace like this. Now you're going to turn over and show them these two aces. Now notice what's happening because of the way you place these. My left finger is covering the bottom of that heart and that looks like a diamond. So if you do that, they think they're seeing quickly the ace of diamonds and the ace of clubs. Now both hands turn over and the left hand throws that card, the joker, like that. And now you show the ace of hearts and place that on top as well. So now on your table, you have the ace of hearts a joker and the ace of clubs, but they don't know that. They think it's the three aces. At this point, you're going to grab the top ace, the ace of hearts. You're going to scoop up the three cards. You're going to just count them off as you pretend to mix them up. It's just one, two, three, and then you're going to place them from your right to your left. They think those are the three aces. That one is secretly a joker. Now you're going to pick up the packet of what they think is the jokers. There's an ace hidden in here. And here's how you're going to display them. You're going to say that leaves us with four cards. And here's how you're going to count them. One, two, it goes under, three goes under, and four goes on top. Now you flip this over and you do the Elmsley count. Now notice how this is going to look exactly as it should because they're going to see this joker twice. One, two, three, four. There's the Elmsley count. So they think they've seen four jokers. You turn this whole thing over and place that one down. It's already an ace. 
they think it's a joker. Obviously you don't show it. Now you turn this back face up and you say, that leaves me with three jokers. One, two, three, you have to reverse these. Then you turn it face down again. You say, watch the first ace. You don't show them that ace, you just place it here. Now you're gonna do an Elmsley count, but it's broken up. You say, I put the ace in my hand and I put the other three cards on top, but this is an Elmsley count. So at this point, you switch that bottom ace and you could show a joker. At this point, you're once again gonna show four jokers with a very deceptive display. Your right hand is gonna come under here, pull out that bottom card. You're gonna show both, you're gonna flip over the left hand like this, show both jokers, turn back, the right hand drops that card, but the left hand drops this card on top. That's a hidden ace, but they're not gonna see that. Then I do the same thing. I show these, place the left one on top and scoop up over there. Now I could show that these are four jokers and the first ace has traveled over here. Now we're gonna do it again. I turn the packet over, I do an Elmsley count to show four jokers. That looks perfect. This is why I use jokers, no discrepancies. You turn this over, set down what they think is a joker when in fact it's an ace. Take the next ace, place it second from the top. So you push over one card like this and put it right in that opening. Now immediately snap or whatever magic gesture you wanna do, turn this over and you're perfectly set up for the Elmsley count. One, two, three, four jokers. And again, I love this. In the original Jazz Aces, you couldn't do that. You had to do it fast because they were gonna see a card twice. In this case, they won't. It makes sense for that joker to be there twice. And now you turn it over. And now you're in the best place in the world because that's already a joker. You're one ahead. So you turn this over. You don't have to do the double lift, but I love it here as an added convincer. I say, look, only four cards. So I show one, two, three, four. I hold these in the right hand. On the way back, I leave my pinky there so it stays under these two cards. So look, just four cards. And now I'm perfectly ready to do a double lift, which is turning two cards over as one to show that joker and set it down. You don't have to do that. I just really like it. Now you take what they think is the last ace, set it in the middle, snap. I like to do a reverse count here. I don't know why. And then you turn them over super slowly to show that the last ace is gone and it is over there. So that was the explanation. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Again, don't be overwhelmed by all the steps. They're not difficult. It just takes a bit of time to remember them. So with a bit of practice, I'm sure you're gonna nail this. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Now, before I go, I'm going to announce the winner of the last contest. So two videos ago, I did a contest where one of you could win a copy of my DVD induction to learn hypnosis from beginning to end. You guys gave some amazing answers to the contest. I really enjoyed it, but the winner I had to go with was uh, Burden FPV for your amazing suggestion of in a show, uh, giving someone compliments, but having them believe that I'm insulting them. I think it's a hilarious hypnosis idea. The moment this quarantine is over, I'm gonna go out and try it. Thank you for that. Reach out to me on Instagram for your prize or privately on any social media. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know in the comments what you thought. Please remember to subscribe, turn those notifications on, and I will see you on the next one.